It's who I am. 
a time that I swore I would never go back I was blind to the truth, didn't know what I had I was running, I was searching But every place I turned for healing Left me more broken than the last Take me back to the place that feels like home To the people I can depend on to the faith that's in my bones Take me back to a preacher and a verse Where they've seen me at my worst To the love I had at first Oh, I want to go to church Tried to walk on my own but I wound up lost Now I'm making my way to the foot of the cross For the winners, it's a shelter for the sinners, and it's right where I belong. Take me back to the place that feels like home, to the people I can depend on, to the faith that's in my bones. Take me back to a preacher and a verse where they've seen me at my worst, to the love I had at first. online. Thanks for tuning in on this last Sunday of July or whenever it is that you're tuning in. At The Gathering, we exist to connect people to the love of Jesus. You know, connecting people to the love of Jesus is something we can't do without your help. So if you're looking to help us make that connection, then I'd like to invite you to give of your tithes and offerings, to give back a portion of what God has entrusted to you so that we can help to build the kingdom of God. For information on how to give, you can go to thegatheringottawa.com slash giving. This morning, we have a special treat for you because we've got a friend of the gathering, JJ, shh, sorry about that. We've got a friend of the gathering, Doug Valerio, bringing the message. Doug is the lead pastor at Manitou Community Church just down the road. The building that they meet in is actually the building that we rented space from for VBC just a few weeks ago. So we're all connected. Doug is speaking in person today at St. FX, and for you, our online viewers, he has a slightly different version of the same message that he's speaking in person, but the message that you are about to hear was actually recorded back in September of 2020. So if you hear some mentions that might sound like early COVID speak or something like that, just note that the message is a bit of an oldie, but a goodie. Doug's video will pop up in just a minute, but first, here's a bit of worship with Brooke Nichols. See you soon. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that He should give His only Son to make a wretch. His strength. 
should I gain from his reward? Thank you, Lord. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but Romans 8 verse 38 says, For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God and Jesus Christ our Lord. And so we say thank you, Father, for that love, that constant unwavering love we do all of this for your glory jesus and in your name amen amen today's message we're going to be talking about digging wells and it's not going to be a Bible study or anything like that. In fact, it's going to be more of a prophetic sort of message, something which I believe God has been speaking to me and speaking to my heart about over the past few weeks. So I just want to share uh, with you really what's, uh, what I've been sensing the Lord's been saying to not just to me, but also to us as individuals and as a church. So digging wells. A well is a place where you draw water from. And without water, there's no life. So wells are really important. They're important in that uh, from the well we get clean, reliable sources of water which sustain our life. And the Bible uses water metaphorically for the spiritual life. So it's no surprise then that when we see Jesus at a well, 
when he's talking to the Samaritan woman that in fact he has a conversation with her about spiritual life and and about living water that he was able to give if you knew the gift of God and who it was that was saying to you give me a drink you would have asked him and he would have given you living water one of the things the Lord's been speaking to me about uh, recently is the is coming back to the understanding that Jesus is the Good Shepherd he knows how to lead his sheep into spiritual renewal he knows where the green pastures are he knows where the quiet and the still waters are that are able to restore our soul and it doesn't matter what valley we happen to be going through at any time Jesus knows how to lead us to living waters his desire is to show us how to dig a well in dry places so that we might have enough water to satisfy our thirst in John 7 verses 37 to 39 if anyone thirsts let him come to me and drink whoever believes in me as the scripture has said out of his heart will flow rivers of living water now this he said about the spirit whom those who believed in him were to receive for as yet the spirit had not yet been given because Jesus was not yet glorified in this passage Jesus likens your heart to be the well and the Holy Spirit to be the well spring from which his life-giving waters the life of the Holy Spirit spiritual life springs forth from living waters now the greatest desire that the Lord has is to dwell in the midst of his people now it might sound strange but when you think about the story of Scripture from Genesis to Revelation God has always come to us not the other way around in Genesis we see that God put Adam and Eve in a garden and God walked with them in the garden God was in their midst right at the very beginning later on we see that God instructed Moses to build a tabernacle why so that the house of God could be with the people and where was that tabernacle right in the middle of the camp later on after that they built the temple in the middle of Jerusalem and that was the place where God's presence came and dwelt with the people and as we see even further on when we come to the the high point if you like of the of the Christian story is that Jesus himself was sent by God so that he would come and dwell with men and that through that we would be able to see what God himself was like and then as we continue to read through scripture we find he sent the Holy Spirit where to dwell in our hearts so that God could be with us Jesus said I will be with you always even unto the ends of the earth and then finally as we read through into Revelation the ultimate goal the telos of God is that we see a picture a prophetic picture of the new heavens and a new earth and out of the heavens we see the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven so that the dwelling place of God would be with man always for all of eternity so we see that right from the very beginning God's design and God's intention was always to spend time with his people in the midst of his people you want to know where God's happy place is it's with you when you draw from the wells of living water where the Holy Spirit is in residence within you you'll find intimacy with him that will satisfy your innermost desires of your spirit because it's in that place of intimacy as you draw from those living waters and as you drink from those living waters of the well of the Holy Spirit in you then you will find that your thirst is completely satisfied and it's satisfied with nothing less than him so as I've been meditating on the message and what the Lord's been speaking to me about digging wells this kind of summarizes what the Lord's been speaking to me it's time to start redigging the old wells some of your wells have silted up some have been stopped up by the enemy 
There used to be a wellspring of joy that bubbled up inside of you. Now that well is dry. Once rivers of living water refreshed your soul. Now your throat is so dry it's hard to swallow and your well is shallow. Dig out the silt, remove the stones. Don't stop till the water flows. It's time to start redigging the old wells. Abandoned wells eventually collapse and that's true in the natural as it is in the spiritual. If our spiritual wells get abandoned, if we stop to using those wells, then those wells become dry and unusable. I want to give you three reasons why these wells might have been abandoned or, or even why they're dried up. Genesis 26 tells a story of Isaac digging wells. So Isaac departed from there and encamped in the valley of Gerar and settled there. And Isaac dug again the wells of water that had been dug in the days of Abraham his father, which the Philistines had stopped after the death of Abraham. And he gave them the names that his father had given them. In the ancient world, one of the ways a conquering army would lay waste to the land that they had conquered was that they would stop up the wells of the people that lived in that region. So they would get rocks and they would throw them into the wells and they would just fill up these wells with all sorts of rubbish so that the people of the land couldn't access water which is so necessary and vital to their lives. And the enemy wants to do the same thing in your life. Those wells of living water, those well springs which are so vital to you and to your spiritual life. The enemy is constantly throwing rocks into your well to try and stop up your well because the enemy at the end of the day doesn't want you to be filled with joy. He doesn't want you to be prospering. He doesn't want you to be set free. He doesn't want you in fact to have any benefit from being a Christian whatsoever. So he does whatever he can to stop you from accessing those wells of living water. Why do you think the enemy tries to get Christians to fight so much over the ministry of the Holy Spirit, whether the gifts of the Spirit are for today or whether we should be speaking in tongues or not, and uh, who is the Holy Spirit and, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and what that means and, and all of that kind of stuff. You know, there's uh, an unbelievable amount of, of nonsense that, that Christians go through and fight over when it comes to the Holy Spirit. And the reason for that is because the Holy Spirit, the very Spirit of Christ himself, is the living water. And as we access living water, our, sp our spirit and our soul prospers. And the enemy hates that. He hates that and he hates Jesus and he hates the fact that you are a well of the Holy Spirit. So Isaac redug the wells of his father. There's a principle in scripture where the blessings of God are meant to flow from generation to generation. It's the way it's supposed to be that the wells that are dug in one generation, the spiritual ground which got taken in a particular generation is then meant to become a wellspring of life for the next generation. So the next generation will have their own wells that they need to dig. But that's not that they abandon the wells of their parents and abandon the wells of their past. No, those get maintained while the Lord then gives commissions to start digging wells in new generations. That's the way that the principle of the Spirit works in intergenerational blessing. So we see in this story that Isaac uh, goes over the land where Abraham was and begins to redig those wells that his father had dug. So what about from our point of view? When we think about it, the enemy is always trying to throw rocks into the wells that we have dug in order to alienate the next generation. How many Christian kids have been lost to the world because the wells have been stopped up? Parents and grandparents, we need to make sure that we keep our wells open. We need to make sure that, that, that we are drawing fresh water from those wells and that our lives are vital so that we have enough water, not just for ourselves, but for our families, for our children and for our grandchildren so that they can taste and see that God is good. 
so that as we begin to teach and train them to dig their own wells, that as they grow up and mature, they will continue to seek God and dig deep into his life, dig deep into the spiritual life and continue on that generational blessing. Uh, maybe that you grew up in a family where your parents or your grandparents were God-fearers and you tasted the waters and you found that they were good. But you've noted that as you've gone on through your life that the water that the world has offered you has never really satisfied you at all. Now is the time for you to go back and to start redigging some of the wells of your parents and some of the wells of your grandparents. So we need to guard our wells. We need to guard our hearts to make sure that the enemy doesn't start putting rocks in our way and stopping up our wells so that we can't draw water for ourselves and for our children and for our grandchildren. It's going to take some effort. It's going to take some time. But it's something that we really need to do. So we need to start removing some of those rocks that have been stopping up our wells and stopping up our joy. Let's take a, another look at the sort of things that can stop up our wells. But when Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found there a well of spring water, the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, this water is ours. So he called the name of the well Essek, because they contended with him. Then they dug another well and they quarreled over that also. So he called its name Sitna. Now the, the names that were given to those two wells, Essek and Sitna, mean something. And they mean this. Essek means strife and Sitna means opposition. Strife and opposition are two reasons why sometimes we abandon our wells that we abandon our first love, that because of the strife and opposition, it becomes just too difficult. It's just too hard to pursue the spiritual life, to pursue the vitality of, of a life dedicated to Christ. And one of the hardest situations to be in, sadly, is in a marriage where one partner is pursuing the Lord and the other perhaps is not pursuing the Lord, or maybe doesn't even know the Lord. And it's a really tough road. It's a tough road for, for one person in, the, in that married situation to maintain a spiritual life, particularly when there is opposition and strife centered around that spiritual life. You know, the Bible teaches us that we shouldn't be unequally yoked and there's wisdom in that. The reason for that, of course, is because the Lord knows that where two people don't walk a road together, it's a difficult road to walk. Maybe the strife and opposition didn't come from a marriage, uh, but in fact came from a church. Maybe you started well uh, in your Christian life and uh, you started out maybe serving and doing some ministry work and things were going really well at the beginning and you had some sort of success at what you were doing but then others told you that well, you can't dig here and you can't do this this water isn't yours it's our water and you can't just come and dig your wells wherever you like you've got to come and use our water well since then you've not tried to dig any more wells because of the strife and the opposition that you received in that particular place or from that particular leader or from that particular church. Since that discouragement, you've not tried to dig another well. You've not tried to dig into another church or tried to serve in ministry in any real capacity that you've felt called to in the past because of the rejection, because of the pain, because of the broken trust, because of the strife and the opposition that you felt. And the well of your ministry gifting was abandoned. And since then, you've been drying up because 
although your spiritual gift and your calling isn't itself the living water it's the well and it's the digging of that well and the drawing from that well that you access the living water that sustains you and you've abandoned that well because the gift seemed to be rejected or didn't seem to be understood at the time so you're thirsty and you're dry and every church that you ever go to you never really seem to be satisfied because you never come to that point of making a decision to forgive and to redig a well if that's you I want to encourage you with this that God sees you and he understands you he knows the hurt and he knows the pain that you've been through he knows the rejection and the pulling in opposite directions that you've felt in your heart because of either your situation or because of the hurts of another church or another leader. I got a word for you from the Lord and it comes from the life of Hagar in Genesis 21 verse 17 to 19 and God heard the voice of the boy and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and he said to her what troubles you Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Up, lift up the boy, and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the skin with water, and gave the boy a drink. It's time to open up your eyes, and see that God has provided a well for you, even in this place. Even if your situation you can't see an end to it and you can't see a change to it. I want to encourage you that there is a well for you that God would have you dig that you might draw from fresh living water that will refresh your soul even in the midst of what seems to be an impossible situation. There is water for you and a well for you to dig. Let's have a look at our third reason why our wells we abandon sometimes or that they have dried up let's go back to the story of Isaac and he moved from there and dug another well and they did not quarrel over it so he called its name Rehoboth saying for now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land the wells that we are talking about here are spiritual disciplines they're things that we do we dig those wells so that we can access the water. So the object of a well is to get to the water that's at the base of the well. It's not the well itself that's important. A well with no water is just a hole and a spiritual discipline that doesn't bring us into closer intimacy with Christ is just dry and fruitless, like a hole. In fact, another word for a hole is a grave. So this third well that we're talking about here is a well that has become silted up and the bottom of the well is dry. There's no longer any water in that well. Although at one point, there was water. At one point, you used to draw from this well and it used to satisfy you. Perhaps you used to read the Word of God and the Word of God just leapt inside of you. And, and it was just, it was like, like fresh water that satisfied you. Or perhaps you had a vibrant prayer life at one point in time in your life. But now prayer just seems to be dry and stale. It doesn't seem to have the same kind of uh, excitement or depth or intimacy that it once had. Maybe you used to spend time with the Lord and, and just had uh, some amazing times and, and times of intimacy and experience with God, but those times have just long since gone and now it's as much as you can do just to come to church and to see people and, and to uh, just kind of pretend to be a Christian. Although you haven't abandoned your faith, it's just hard work. It's dry. It's like an abandoned well. The house in which I live 
uh, we have well water. So we don't have town water. Uh, we're not that sophisticated. So we still draw water from a well, not a bucket outside the front, but you know, we've got a bore that goes down and we, and we draw water from that. So we have a well. And here in Canada, we find that the water table rises and lowers quite significantly throughout the year. So what do you do if you find that your well has run dry? Well, you don't abandon your well. You dig deeper. You dig and you keep digging until you actually hit water that is available all the time. A shallow Christian is always looking for easy water. Water that's just freely available, easy to access. And you'll find that those kind of Christians uh, usually fill up at someone else's well. But a mature Christian is someone who keeps digging that well until there's water all year round. And if that water runs dry, if that water table drops, it's an invitation for you as a Christian to go deeper, to dig deeper. This is one of the encouragements that we miss so often in our society because we're so used to getting everything so free and so easy in our instant society that if I don't get something here, if I don't get my needs met here, or I don't find satisfaction in this place, then I'll go somewhere else and get it. But that isn't the life of a mature Christian. When we find that what used to come easy and what used to be satisfying for us at one point in our life is now become dry and no longer satisfying, it doesn't mean that God's abandoned you. What it means is that God has lowered the water table of your spiritual life to invite you to go deeper, to invite you to dig further, to invite you to strengthen the walls of that well, because there's always more where God is concerned. There's always more of him than you can handle at any one time. And the invitation is to plumb those depths is to dig that much deeper and to keep digging. And don't stop until you've hit that living water again. And that living water satisfies your soul and satisfies your thirst. So when the Lord brings a word to us, it's always good to spend a little bit of time just to prayerfully reflect about the word the Lord has brought to us and what our response should be so I'm going to pray now, and as I pray, I just want you to think about those three things that we've been talking about. The fact that we need to redig our wells, some of the old wells, some of those things that we used to find satisfying that are no longer satisfying, a well that has been silted up in our life. And ask the Lord, Lord, is there something that you've been trying to tell me about that I've been dull of hearing over? Is there a silted well in my life that I need to redig? Or perhaps it's the well that needs to have the rocks taken out because the enemy has just been stopping up your well. He's just been throwing all sorts of junk in your way that has just stopped you from, from, from getting any kind of satisfaction and spiritual life flowing again. And you need to deal with the enemy. You need to unstop those wells. Clear some of the garbage out so that you can receive freely from God and drink clean water again. Or perhaps you need to spend some time seriously forgiving and seriously asking the Lord to bring you to this place of grace where you can release either some of the unforgiveness and the hardness of your heart where others have been concerned that have given you strife and opposition. Or seek the Lord for that place of grace in your situation, maybe in your marriage or in another relationship where it's just very difficult for you. And like Hagar, see that God has a well for you in that place. So out of those three, let's pray. Father God, we just ask Lord that in this time, 
as we've been sitting underneath your anointing, sitting underneath your word, I ask you, Father, in Jesus' name, that you would speak to our hearts, Lord, as we just quiet those before you now. Father, which one well do we need to redig? Speak to our hearts, Lord. Reveal it to us, Lord. Father, maybe you've been speaking to us about digging a new well. Maybe there's something you've been asking us to do which you know will lead us into renewal. That'll lead us into that next place of spiritual satisfaction. Lord, if there's a new well that we need to dig, and Father, make it clear to us now. In Jesus' name. Amen. There was a time that I swore I would never go back. I was blind and the truth didn't know what I had. I was running, I was searching, but every place I turned for healing left me more broken than the last. Take me back to the place that feels like home, to the people I can depend on. To the faith that's in my bones Take me back to a preacher in a verse Where they've seen me at my worst To the love I had at first Oh, I want to go to church I Tried to walk on my own but I wound up lost Now I'm making my way to the foot of the cross trophy for the winners it's a shelter for the sinners and it's right where I belong take me back to the place that feels like home to the people I can depend on to the faith that's in my bones take me back to a preacher and a verse where they've seen me at my worst to the love I have See me.